Hey, welcome to the Once Upon a Time in Huntsville podcast, hosted by me, Sampa Baranaga. I know I'm a, I got a new background, decided to change it up a bit. Uh, today, I got to sit down with Jacob Laughlin, and we got to talk about his experience shooting mud opposite Matthew McConaughey, his experience working on the Maze Runner films, and also, of course, we got to talk about our upcoming film, 12 Mighty Orphans, which uh, no release date yet, but uh, I'll keep you guys in touch. Uh, Jacob and I got to talk about a lot of fun things. We talked a lot about a good friend uh, who's also been on the podcast, Woodrow Luttrell. Shout out to him. Uh, so this is a great episode. We just kind of hung out. So enjoy. Hey, what's up, dude? Yo. There dude, he is. What's up? Not much. I love your background. That's badass. Dude, thank you, man. Yeah, I'm uh, like Tarzan. Like Whenever people see that, they're like, Tarzan, like why out of all the Disney movies? I like I just love it. Tarzan's a great film. Uh and then La La Land was uh the first movie that uh me and my now fiance saw in theaters together. So it's kind of like a special so I appreciate that. You're like the only yeah. one that has said that when they see that. Everyone's just like, hmm, cool. No, it's cool. I, I figured it had to knowing you it had to have some kind of meaning behind it or it wouldn't be too abstract, totally different. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, I knew I knew there's something there. I love, like the comforter behind you that's what it, I assume it is oh yeah this is my this is where I do all my tapes neutral I, background neutral. I have right in front of me I have the, like the same thing except it's a shower curtain that I've like taped to the yeah. wall so I don't just have to like you know there's actually a window behind this I just hang it on the on the drapes like where the curtains nice. hang. Work great. That's a behind weird. camera yeah no one needs to know what's going on behind the camera. I used to do that back at my parents that's hilarious to know that someone else like that's where I got it. That's what I started doing there. I was just like, ah, it'll work here too. Well, like if it works, why, why need, why do you need to upgrade it or try to make it? Ain't it ain't Don't fix it, man. Exactly, man. That's kind of my philosophy. Dude, I really appreciate you taking time. I Absolutely. Just, I mean, really, I mean, I know this is like for a podcast, but really I just like, I haven't talked to you face to face. And like, yeah, that's my thing. I just wanted this chat. That's what's fun about a podcast. Isn't it? Yeah, dude, exactly, man. I'm so stoked. Uh, I kind of wanted, and we're recording now. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just cool. kind of watch into it. I don't do like an intro or anything, but um, I remember. So we met uh, for for the people listening uh, at, during Twelve Mighty Orphans on the set of that. Do you remember like the first time we met? Specifically? Um, I th- I think we had all like, kind of seen each other walking around a little bit, like the first day when everyone was coming in. But to me, the first memory I have of meeting everyone was when we came downstairs at the uh at the courtyard the first night right off the side of the interstate and we all just kind of like swarmed together yeah somehow just, like, it was everyone in the yeah we just wound up there yeah we just like talked for like two or three hours i had met so the first one person i'd met was bailey and then me and him went to i think we met manny and tyler at like a chili's or like a apple was it the applebee's next door was because i remember that happened at least two times that was yeah. the place that we went for the first two or three days till we were like no nah, we can't do this anymore. <laughs> we can't do this anymore like, it's just i mean i i'm not sponsored by applebee's it's i i'm not in love with applebee's they're kind of like a dying franchise but i don't want to like spit on them or anything no 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 100 <laughs> but, but you know um, everything's everything's good in moderation it's just i don't i can't live on applebee's that's all i'm saying i just can't live on it. i need a little variety um, <laughs> no absolutely uh, i feel like restaurants that serve everything like every type of food never can be great no no <laughs> you either get you either get like cheap and fast or good and and you know time specific yeah like <laughs> specific have both. That they serve yeah, you can't have both but i remember yeah we all like were talking for like a couple hours and like you levi and jake were together you guys came in we all like met and stuff and uh then like there was never like really any, I, I, and I admit, yeah, and I feel like you'll agree with me. And I feel like all the rest of the guys, there was never like a, uh, like let's figure out the hierarchy where we all stand together. Because on most film sets, I'm sure you might agree, that's what it yeah. is instantly. They're like, oh, what have you done? And like, uh, like, well, oh, well, I've done this. Instead, it's just like we were just talking about things we love. Yeah and stuff i love how in, in those conversations would definitely come up with us but it was never like a it was never like a who's done something better who's done more it was always like oh cool let's talk about those experiences like let's you know let's let's that's how we that's how i learn anyway like i love 
that. I love those conversations between us because it's not that we're bragging. Like a lot of times it might be something that someone else hasn't went through yet. And someday you get to that point and it's like, I remember that time that they were telling me and this, you know, you have an idea. It helps me to, to do that stuff. You exactly. Know? And I feel like uh, outside of us, I feel like being able to work with uh, Luke Wilson and especially uh, sure. Martin Sheen, you know, Martin Sheen has worked in this industry such a long time. Yeah. His and stories. Like, were <laughs> Dude. And just like, and then, because you think how could a person last in this industry that long? And then like, you look at him and he's just like the sweetest guy, great stories. Like what I thought was really cool about him is like whenever they'd say cut, cause like um, I know Woody and I are like subs for the team. So like some takes I'd be standing with like him and coach, like cheering you guys on while you guys are doing playing. But whenever they said cut, he would turn around and just start talking to people behind him, you know, the extras and asking them where they're from and stuff. And I was like, man, like I just need to make sure to always kind of like be aware of who I'm around and that like I can affect like not only them, and not just do it so I appear nice, but he was genuinely, right. busy, which was like really helpful to all of us guys. Cause like uh, some of like us had never done anything. I had done like, I had been on set. I had, I had done like a couple day playing things and then like you and then Levi and like Jake had like been on TV shows and stuff. So like, I feel like we all kind of learned a lot from each other. Like you kind of said, without bragging, yeah. like wanting to be kind to one another. And I think, you know, you, you were saying about Martin staying on TV forever. Like, to me, what makes that that man and people like him special, it's not only are they extremely talented, more so than, you know, most of the earth, but they like they have a gift, one. But the second thing is the personality that they bring with them is is always open, always inviting, and they never think that they know more than the person standing. It doesn't matter who's standing next to them you know they engage the same way all the time dude absolutely. That, that gets you so so far in whatever it is you know whether it be acting or, or just a, a manual labor everyday job like if you can go into things with that attitude you're gonna go so much farther and that i'm i'm just now starting to learn that like and that's really cool and getting to work with those people and witness that helps so much as a human to grow and and figure out how to become successful you know figure out how to make have the longevity that he's had to me I, I really i love that that's what i love about those people it's so cool to see because like you know that there's that saying um don't meet your heroes because they're going to disappoint you but like i feel like i mean sure that's a possibility but when you hear that like one of the i think one of the really cool things about acting is that it's one of the very few jobs where you can actually not only meet your heroes but like their co-workers you can work with them like you yeah, can get to know them yeah and so it's so much more special when not only they're like cool to be around but they like genuinely want to help you like martin like sat with us at lunch like almost every single day like i remember uh when i do you remember when i was doing that i don't want to say too much but i there's a certain part in the movie where i am like vomiting yeah um and like yeah. i remember when i was doing that he'd come up to be like are you okay like even though like <laughs> he knew it was like fake he could tell that like my whole mouth and throat was in pain because of the stuff i had in my he'd be like are you okay do you want me to go get you a water which is like yeah, not his yeah. job at all to do no but, but such a cool guy and um before i want to talk more about 12 by orphans uh one of the, like i'm you, the first movie you ever did you got to hang out with possibly like maybe the coolest guy on yeah. earth uh, uh it, it was fun it was an interesting <laughs> i mean uh that, that that experience was like it was the best and the craziest and when i say craziest i don't it's, it wasn't honestly crazy in a good way or a bad it was it was one of those learning experiences it was like i guess i could have taken it either way but i decided just to learn from everything that happened you know like, yes um and and that kind of jump started me into doing this and then the longevity that I've had which isn't much but I really think that attitude is what got me there because I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> absolutely no clue what I was doing and I would just show up and I remember like the first for sure first week and a half two weeks of mud it was like I, I wasn't even a lot like I couldn't remember what would happen throughout the day because <clears throat> when someone said action or or when we were on set and talking to Matthew and talking, you know, to, about the stuff, it was like adrenaline took over. It was like this excitement yeah. that I'd never felt doing anything in my life, but it wasn't, 
wasn't like adrenaline, like a car wreck that wears yeah. off. In it stayed all day long. Like it never went away. It was like a drug. It was the craziest, you know, feeling I've ever had. So that was another thing where it was like, this is what I think I want to do. And then once I started losing that, it got a little harder. Yeah, <laughs> like then, no. you, know, you still get the feeling, but it's like that kind of carries you through that first part. So when you start, when that starts coming off, you really have to figure out your art and your craft. And again, I'm really just starting to do those things. Like I've never, uh, I've never experimented a, a lot with them, but it's, I love doing it. And, and that's why I love acting. If you have the freedom to learn so much stuff about you and other people and I, don't, I love learning it's my yeah opinion. uh one of the things that you and i talked about on set because uh you were homeschooled as well mm -hmm. um but did you uh, i did you ever go to public school or were you like always homeschooled i went to public school um through the eighth grade what i transferred and went one year at a different school i went uh seven years at, the, at our local school which is the building actually is still two miles from my house but it's been shut down and then I went to a bigger school for a year and then started getting homeschooled after that. What was what was public school like for you? I'm always fascinated to talk to actors about like what their school life was. How did they function within like a, you know, you have to walk in a line, you have to like be right. here at this certain time, pay attention, you know, stuff like that. Not great. Didn't, I, I didn't take it great. School wasn't a strong suit for me. Mm -hmm. um, in the younger grades, like I remember, uh, I like to think I was always kind of aware of what I was feeling and the way I was acting and the reason. Mm -hmm. But when I was in like sixth grade, I had dyslexia really bad. Okay. So it was really hard for me to keep up with the rest of my class. And we have a super, had a super small school, had seven kids in my class. <laughs> only was, seven kids? Only seven kids. Oh and that was gosh. a big class. Like, I'm not talking about seven kids in math. I'm talking about like seven kids in the fifth grade, like that small. Oh, okay. Tiny, wow. tiny, tiny. So it was, you know, you're always even being here it was like I was always at the forefront and that being my life even though you're not surrounded with 500 kids looking at you like it's the same thing when you're sitting in a room with five kids going why can't you do this and we all can you know oh, so I started yeah. I started figuring out how to make people laugh and like to get in you know I, I started being the class clown really quick and as I grew that didn't work with school because I just kind of gave up on learning stuff at that point I didn't want okay. to I learned in my own way I would learn when I went home and I've, just, I've learned stuff from my dad, you know, I just, I've never learned in school. I've never been able to learn. Was there like a certain point where, like for me. And so once that school shut down, we really had no hands on. Was there ever like a certain point where you were like pretty good at school and then like all of a sudden like a new topic was taught, brought up and then like it stopped working? Because for me personally, I remember specifically, this is like uh do you ever have like one of those memories that just will never erase that like embarrassed you so bad so yeah. I, I I had missed I think it was in the fifth grade I had missed one day of school for some I can't remember why and then I came back in the class the next day and they had just gone over decimals so I missed like her the teacher's whole introduction to decimals and so she had me go up and she wanted to run through them really fast with me and like I was pretty good at math like I was good at multiplication all that stuff and for some reason like decimals were not like clicking with me and in front of the whole class I think they thought I was like joking but I was like actually just bad I didn't understand what I was doing and everyone was like laughing and so like at the time I thought they were laughing at me now that I look back at it I'm just like oh like I was kind of like the class clown before that so they maybe thought I was joking but like that's when I was like oh I'm not like good at school anymore this is yeah. not good <laughs> like that kind of like once that me. happens as a kid though it like it does something to oh you it, it really suppresses like the the want to to try and and do it you know like once that happens and you have one of those as a child especially to me it did to me a lot teachers have like such this huge responsibility and like i i, I respect them for that like but sometimes like that, yeah. that teacher like probably just went home and like didn't realize what happened to me or yeah. there are some teachers that just like do nice stuff that they think is just human. You're just like, oh my gosh, like, like I want to try to be like that. But um, so, so you go to public school and they did homeschooling. What was that like for you? Did you go to um, did you actually ever go to like a co-op class or were you strictly at home? I was pretty much strictly at home. I might have done a co-op class like a time or two on it, like at the very beginning or something. Huh. Um, but I mostly did it from home. We had in Arkansas, the rules were a little different at the time. So you could 
to pretty much it, which I'm sure you know you can't anywhere now. But it was like twelve uh, K through twelve and stuff was kind of just taking off the online thing. So we started doing stuff like that, and then that got kind of hard because I was fifteen, fourteen, fifteen at the time. Mm-hmm. Both my parents had a full time job, so they expected me to you know do my school. Yeah, they were at work. Like, you can imagine how that went. So, uh, and where I lived, there's always, you know, like I, I just wanted to go out and be in the woods or be outside, just do yeah. something. And I wouldn't see anyone all day, but I would just ride a dirt bike or something. And that's how I grew up. Mud was like my life. The way those kids lived was me. That's I didn't have to act. Yeah, we how, just happened to see a lot more people. How old were you when you did mud? Fifteen, I believe. I, ju- I think I just turned fifteen when I got mud. So I would have gotten out of school before then. I'm not good with dates. I'm not good with timelines. I don't really keep up with that stuff. It just, it's just memories and goes, you know? You're good, man. So <laughs> how many times, I, cause I've, I've heard, I think you told me the story or I've, I've heard somewhere that like you went to like an open casting call and then from there, then on out, like, did you have to do any more auditions or readings with like Matthew or, uh, or any of your other co-stars? I did, uh, I did a reading with Ty. We flew to Austin and I did a reading with Ty mm-hmm. and we just stayed for one day and I flew back on a Tuesday, I believe. And me and my dad woke up the next morning working on a, on a bulldozer. He's in like construction equipment and stuff. So yeah. and I was small enough to help him. So I crawled up in there and I was like completely black with grease. And my mom calls and she's like, do you want this job? They called and said, it's yours if you want it. And that's the day my life changed, I guess. Two weeks from that, I was on a movie set for the first time ever. And now that's what I'm comfortable in. So That's awesome. That's the, Yeah, that was the story. I, I never really wanted to be an actor. I remembered when I was doing homeschool and stuff, I kind of started leaning that way only uh-huh. because I had a lot of time to watch TV and, and you know, Disney Channel. Those kids were like my age. And I was like, how do you know, they can do it. I, I think I could do that. And yeah. I would start by myself just like almost acting with them you know we're like repeating what they did and try to change it and try to just seeing if I could do what they were doing but no one ever knew it and so when all that came about it was it was kind of cool that the universe was just like the the way it put it together you know that that puts a big smile on my face because I would do the same thing I would watch the sweet life of Zach and Cody and be like (laughs) if like I can do this why how come the phone's not ringing like I want to do I could do this and like I would just like watch those and be like, oh, this is how I would have done it. Or like, oh my, like, I would just love to be like a guest star on all these different Disney shows. Like which, or what Disney shows like did you watch and do that with? Honestly, The Sweet Life, Zach and Cody was a, yeah. was a big one. Before that, you know, SpongeBob and stuff. But like, yeah. uh, Shake It Up. I, I <laughs> loved, like I would watch Shake It Up. Uh, Hannah Montana, I, I was on the back end of that. Like I was young enough to start it when it started. And then I started watching it again for some reason, just because like Billy I just loved watching them I knew the people and there were like stories behind what was going on yeah that was like the, that was like for me the first kind of reality you know like the people there had another life outside of what they were doing on outside of that show that uh-huh. was bigger yeah. than that but you could still watch that show and they would like connect it you know it was funny to me to be able to yeah. do that to kids for kids you don't see that on tv now no you know, it's yeah. a little, in, in those shows anyway I feel like we learned more off of ours. <laughs> what they teach now. Yeah, I totally agree. I'm definitely like, I don't want to sound like a grumpy old man, but I, yeah. like, I definitely feel like we got like the better end of like the Disney Channel era. And especially, did you ever, did you like, would you wait for like the Disney Channel like movie premieres? Do you remember like the count? For sure. Had? For sure. Minutemen, stuff like that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. I would sit there and watch The Sweet Life and Zeke and Luther and whatever came yeah. on. Yeah. You know? And just wait on it for sure. Yeah, that was fun, dude. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, not only did you do you get to work with uh, Matthew McConaughey, who at that time, like Mud, kind of began what they call like the McConaissance, like when he, we he did Mud, Killer Joe, True Detective, Interstellar. But you also get to work with like maybe I would say maybe the most underrated directors like in our in our time right now. Like, yeah. what was that? what was that that was awesome the the director I, I feel super blessed and and lucky to work with the directors that I've worked with and and the and the talent that they've all had it's been especially Jeff Nichols like yes that that he was the reason he 
if it hadn't been for him, I probably wouldn't have pursued it, even with the feeling and everything else, because he really broke it down and, and told you how it was. Like, maybe not even in the nicest way possible all the time. That's not who he is. Like, he, yeah. is, he is straight, you know, straight fact. Truth ain't going to hurt you, you know. Like, yeah. And he directed me like that for the first time. And he's honestly one of the only directors that I've ever had to be kind of brutally honest you know like not really tell you what you want to hear and try to change it but let you know what you need to change and I love that that's, that's how I, you know that's how I was raised that's how people taught me that's how I learned so he he kind of he he really helped in that sense and, and I've called him like I've talked to him asking him questions about other jobs and stuff before and he's always always there he's always he's just an awesome dude like that's awesome. Him, him and Matthew McConaughey are two people that you'll never find enough you'll never find two more people nicer or better at what they did besides me um besides no. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> no but uh um i think that's really cool because some of the directors i've worked with some of my favorites have been like blunt but like the reason they're blunt is not because they have power but because they have this vision and they have this passion yeah. and it has to be exact you just have to trust that what they're telling you is going to work out when you see it on the big picture and like Jeff Nichols, obviously, uh, I watched, uh, I think I watched it right before uh, we, we came and did uh, 12 Mighty Orphans was um, a Take Shelter Great um, movie. with uh, yeah. Michael Shannon, who you also got to work with. Mm -hmm. um, that's like, <laughs> ah, such an amazing film. And I love that Jeff Nichols also shoots on film. Like his, like Mud, um, I actually, a couple months ago, uh, two of my little brothers came over and we were browsing through Netflix and it was on there. They had never seen it. I was like, oh, this is like the perfect movie because uh, they're 15 and 14. I was like, this is the perfect age for them to watch this movie. And they were watching it. And uh, Jack, um, goes, one of my brothers, he goes, wow, this is like a really pretty movie. And I was like, yeah, yeah it is. It's shot on film. And I, I just love that I got to talk to him about that. So after you do Mud, um, like, were you ever in a sense a state of like shoot what do i do now do i need like an agent like for sure for the rules for sure. i went i went a year and didn't do anything after that because i had no idea of what to do like had no direction you know uh it didn't just fall into place it's not you know it's not something that like everyone knows you don't just show up on one and then all of a sudden boom you've done it like you're yeah. there um but we didn't of course we didn't know that had no idea what to expect after so it got done and we had the conversation me and my mom she she's me and my mom's been through everything all all of this together like she's my person That's my dad's super supportive but my mom has been there and with me through you know every shoot up until the age of 18 like she was there every time all the time never a, a stage mom or anything like never overpowering always would was free to like let you go do and, and talk and do you know it, I feel I was really blessed to have her with me and be able to have the freedom to talk to these people and learn and um but so after that there was a year where we didn't do anything and we had the conversation of like well that's a crazy experience that most people will never get to have so even at this like even at this we've had a great time and this is it like you know cool story yeah um and we kind of accepted that so then a year later, the movie still hasn't came out. Mud took like two, two and a half years to actually come come out after we had shot it. Um, but it sold or uh, started getting distributed, went to Cannes. And Dude, they called it. huge, by the way. Wanted us to go to Cannes. So first time I'd ever been on an airplane was for Mud to go to Austin, right? That was, yeah. I forgot, I left that out. That was my first ever real flight like that I'd taken. <laughs> um so that was the first experience. So now I'm getting to leave the country. I had to get a passport. Like I hadn't ever had a passport, had no reason to have one. So um, we, we do that, go to Cannes, the most hiring experience of my life. Beautiful place, but the most yeah. hiring experience of my life. Um, At that time, did you realize how important that was for a film to go to Cannes? No, no, not yet. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't under, I mean, even, until I was home, honestly, because it was, almost like the first few days of mud it was such a whirlwind and there was so much going on you're getting pulled in so many directions and like you know hey you have absolutely no time to think like you've got stuff in your head that is set there for that yeah. reason and you're just 
going all day long and then they're like okay lunchtime and you take 20 minutes and then it's like okay this one this one this one you know yeah they're just lined up as far as you can see it's like oh my god um it's super fun super lucky to be able to do it but that's the stressful part of our jobs you know like that's the stuff that's like mentally exhausting sometimes um so we went, went through that i think i was 16 pretty sure i was 16 at that time Mm -hmm. And when we got there, we had a meeting with Reese's uh, managers with Management 360 at the time. They represented her. And Evelyn O'Neill, who's my manager, reached out and said that she wanted to represent me. And this was the first time we'd ever had anything like that. So I said, of course, you know, that, that's awesome. I'll definitely take that. Yeah. And we did. And we ran with it. And still to this day, that they're who I'm with and that's always awesome. will be until something happens. I've got a great relationship with everyone there and we've been through, you know, they taught me everything to get to this point in the business yeah. side of it. So I feel really lucky and blessed to have the people in my life that's put me and gave me the opportunities to learn to get to there. Um, so after that, we got them and pretty much went to work within like six months. I got another job called Little Accidents with a little boy named, his name is Bo Wright and he's got Down syndrome and we made the movie with him and at the time for an independent like it was it was some it was a it wasn't really a struggle because he was great at what he did like he was he's fantastic the talent that kid had was insane um but we shot that whole movie with him and me and him were like brothers and still stay in contact and stuff so that was cool um and honestly after that when I get kind of blurry it was either justified or Texas Rising it was it was a show but I can't remember which one I think it was justified first I'm pretty sure I got justified right off the back of, or Texas Rising right off the back of Justified. And it was, uh, so it was like, yeah, it was just a whirlwind. Like, I love sitting here talking about it because it's cool to think back on the memories and, and the emotions that you had through it, you know? Dude, that's awesome that you have that outlook because I know like some people are just like, ah, I don't want to talk about it or whatever, but it's just like, I just want to hear about your, like, yeah. I just want to hear about other people's experience. That's why I'm like doing this podcast. I want to talk to other actors. I love it. Point. By the way, I've been listening to a few of your podcasts. I absolutely love them. Oh, dude, thanks. <laughs> you have do you a listened great job. To, uh, the one Woody and I did? Yes. Yes. I dude, love it. That is like one of my most viewed uh, episodes. Anytime you put Woody on something, you're about to get some views. Like, I don't know how he hasn't went viral with the videos that he puts out yet. <laughs> dude uh, uh it's so funny me and him were talking yesterday on the phone he called me up because he was like i got an audition i i don't know what to do so i was just kind of walking i'm so proud of me yeah awesome. i know me too i because i told him i was like dude you're you know you know woody he, he thinks oh, yeah. bothering you but you're like no woody you are like Not the best all, person dude. ever i want to actually help you and yes. so we were going through it and then um i was like oh i'm doing uh, jacob's doing my podcast so we were talking about uh whenever he spent like uh some time with you and then he was like this i this like what he said perfectly describes what he goes yeah uh me and uh jacob jacob had a friend and me and him really hit it off and he's been at my house for a month now and i was like yeah that explains who woody is if you meet woody you're just like yeah i just want to hang out with him you just fall month. in love with him i mean like you just you literally <laughs> yeah. just fall in love with the dude he's he's there's no one like woody yeah i oh. and he was, uh, in that podcast episode i love telling this story uh so uh uh for 12 my getting back on 12 my orphans uh like so i did i think three auditions prior to like the chemistry callback that we had to mm -hmm. do with some of the guys and at the time i was reading for uh leon and chicken and i i ended up getting chicken but i was like man i like this leon guy too he, he's got some funny lines and i remember we were all i was sitting on a couch going over my stuff I'm talking to the rest of the guys and Woody walks in, you know, wearing what Woody wears and you know, walking the way Woody walks and talking the way he does. He sits right next to me. And so we start hitting it off. And he was like, who are you auditioning for? And I go, oh, uh, Leon and Chicken. And he's auditioning. He goes, oh, I'm uh, reading for Leon. And so when I, I at the time, I was like, oh, well, he's he's booked Leon. Without a doubt, just, right? looking at just the way he's he, he booked it. And what's funny in his mind, he told me on that podcast, he was like, oh, man, this guy booked Leon. Like, I just love that we both thought that at the same time. 
he, yeah but uh i got it i actually have this written down in my notes i have like all these things i want to talk about and then on one That's- on one line i just have woody because <laughs> i know we could get a lot of stuff out of them what okay I'm sorry to kind of turn away from we're talking about your story stuff. If it's all right, do you mind if I ask you what did you tell me? You got you have to have a Woody story when he went and spent like a month with you hunting or something. There's got to be something he did you got to share. I mean, there's so many things that he did. (laughs) Um, Like, that's the thing about Woody. Like, really, I don't know if one stands out because it's an experience being with him. Like, every day that we would wake up, it was like, what is going to come out of his mouth like what what's going to happen yeah. today you know yeah um oh he he like started working so since i've been home and through the pandemic and stuff i'm not a person that can sit around and i'm also you know going a little broke not being able to work so yeah i've gotten i've gotten some jobs like helping farmers and stuff I live, again super rural there's like farms everywhere i've got like eight of them within a mile oh my god so, yeah yeah just lots of land and I have been helping in chicken houses and stuff. So when Woody showed up, that's what I was doing. And I was like, hey, man, if you want to you know, come make a little money with me, you can. So he jumped in right with me and we went to work and he was like raking hay for the dude I'm working for, driving tractors, all that. Like he was in his element. He was just that's doing awesome, his thing. Man. We, I woke up one morning and, you know, Woody always wear. you know what he wears. Woke up one morning, he looks like Farmer Dan. OK, he's got like he's got a straw hat like an like a kenny chesney straw hat that's yeah. all bent up he's got some like denim overalls that are about four inches too short for him and he's ready to go ride the tractor and, and all day long he'd pick up different pieces of straw you know just put like the the image of him across a field riding on that yes. tractor with a piece of straw in his mouth was hilarious just, that's, yeah. that's probably the one that just really sticks out Exactly. And it's not that hilarious but you know what he looks like no i absolutely you know understand. the smile on his face oh it's just Dude, it it's just hilarious. Kills you. my favorite woody uh clothing item one i think that he should uh, as soon as the movie comes out and he blows up because he will his character is hilarious for uh, sure he needs to create a clothing line and specifically have that big fluffy jacket Yep. You know, the with the collar, he needs to put like yeah. WL right there and just he'll he'll be a billionaire in no time if he if he if he does that. <laughs> yeah, he could do that or or the jumpsuit. Like he, he went and bought a jumpsuit. Did you know that? <laughs> no, yeah, I didn't. He, like, you know the suits that we got. He he went and bought one. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Like we yeah. had on set, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, he went and bought one of those, and that's what he wears it all the time. Dude, I mean, <laughs> honestly, I never see I would love I, to. I never got to wear one like actually filming, but I got to wear one whenever we were doing uh, what our specific characters would wear, uh, wardrobe. And I was like, dang, this actually one, it kind of looks good on me. And second, like, it's kind of comfortable. Pretty comfortable. And my chicken ended up being stuck in uh, overalls the whole time, which honestly yeah. weren't that bad either. But um, <laughs> Woody's great, man. We. <laughs> Like I could create just a podcast called Woody and just have people on and talk about their experiences with him. You should do it. <laughs> but uh, he cracks me up. Also, one of my other favorite stories is uh, uh, the first time we got uh, checks on set. He like looked at it and was like, "Well, dang, I didn't know it was that much." And yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, well, "Woody, yeah, we get pretty paid pretty well." And he's like, "Well, he like even was more per- perked up." He's like, "Wow, this is amazing!" Like, not only do you I mean I'm not working for nothing. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I just loved that he was already like full of joy doing it, and not really realizing how much you know we're blessed uh, for what we do. But going back to kind of your timeline, so you do Justified, and then you said Texas Rising as well. Yep. And then I know you also did The Sun, too, right? Yeah, that was, uh, let's see, the first season of that would have been between the second Maze Runner and the third Maze Runner. And then the last season of The Sun was basically the last thing I'd done up until I met you guys. So so kind of prior to that, you've done these, like, not only indie, indie independent films but like super successful ones what was it like being on like the maze runner set where that's like a a franchise popular books it was uh it was it's hard to explain it, it you didn't want for anything you know like you're comfortable like 
they take really good care of you that money is definitely spent to take care of everything and make stuff yeah. run smoothly you know and that's that's just how it goes there's there's parts to every one of them you know a lot of times and again i'm not trying to say anything about any particular movies especially especially ones that I've worked on, but I've, get, I've gotten a sense before that studio movies, you know, those big budgets, a lot of times you kind of lose the, and we know that, you kind of lose the real story, like, you know, the yeah. heart of, of what of what someone wrote it for, but a lot of times they don't write it with that, you know. For sure. Um, that, that's my, my thoughts on it. And an independent, like, you really get back to what you want, and it really it teaches you the art, you know, again, like, you really get to experience the art of it. I love I love the the difference. I love keeping them different. I don't ever want to just do one thing. TV's the same way, you know. TV's totally different. So fast paced, dude. Love yes. that. Love that. I recently kind of I know you've done a lot more TV than I have. I re, after Twelve Mighty Orphans, I did uh, my first uh, TV show, Your Honor, and it kind of like was really cool to kind of go from a film to TV to see how different they are, how fat because TV. I mean, you know. Uh, the show I was doing was a mini series, uh, w- w- and it ran for ten episodes. So it was like that's a lot of material they got to get out super fast. Super fast, yeah, dude. And what? So what was it like being on the set? So was Justified uh, your first TV experience? Justified was my first TV. It was for uh, FX, and that was that was that was really fun. That was the, you know, in my eyes, I was like, oh, I've made it to this. Yeah, like, I've made it here. You know, this is cool, and I really took that in. First time ever working in a studio, that was kind of neat. I, I remember being more impressed, not just with how well it worked as an old machine, but the people that built the sets and the people like you know the grips and the and the carpentry team and like everyone that came in and made that stuff happen. Oh my God! Like how fast they move, how like in in the work that they do, the the detail that they put, like it's nuts. It's, it's insane. Crazy. And uh, sorry to interrupt you here, but like, oh, like what you're saying. So uh, we shot the first ep- or the first episode I'm in of Your Honor, like in an actual school. But then yeah. um, uh, I can't um, I can't remember why the episode was pushed back or one uh, or one part of this. It was in the same episode. But for some reason, that part was pushed back. And so we came back like three months later to shoot the scene following that scene we just did in the school. And we went up in like this train station building and like we were going upstairs. And then as soon as I got upstairs, it was like a school, like they had built all this stuff. And I was like, this is like trippy because it looks like an actual principal's office. And and it was just like, man, like really like, especially like costume designers and all those people that build those sets are really underappreciated because not only do they make it look real for the audience, but like for actors, if something doesn't look real, our performance is going to be lowered buy that most of the time so like when they do that like i'm just like this is incredible this is so cool yeah. i can now believe i'm in this world your environment whenever we're doing that though is so much of the world in that and that's one thing that jeff nichols again taught me because he's he said from day one in mud that the landscape and the place that we were was more of a character than any of us which is completely true if it hadn't have been for you know, if he hadn't have found those perfect locations, like the boat in the tree, he scouted for, I don't know how long, but that boat set in that tree. Like I, I've told people this so many times, but it really set in that tree. Like he Wait, found the like- perfect tree to put a boat in and they had a crane put a boat in like that boat in that tree. And it sat there for most of the shoot. And we just, it sat there. Like wow. it was just perfectly held, had engineers look at it and they were like, yep, not going anywhere. It's completely solid. Cause something and like in the tree. Because something like that could easily be easily uh, be shot like on a soundstage, green screen, everything else, Easily. and yeah. then just have that tree be an artificial tree. That's now, so when cool. we're when when me and Ty are coming down the back of that boat on a rope, we're actually on a rope. Like we're actually coming down the back of that boat to the ground, and it wasn't like they make it look a little higher, but it was probably you know 20, 30 foot in the air. Like it was crazy. We drove up to it. I'll never forget the day we drove up to it. And we're just like, how do we get up there? That's like uh, a young boy. That rope? <laughs> that's like a young boy's dream. Like I, I I grew up in New Market, Alabama, and I grew up on eight acres. And there's like I have a bunch of four. And so like me and my brothers would just be constantly looking for stuff like that. 
Like where, yeah. like where's the tree house that's already built that we can just go look for stuff in? Like where's buried treasure? You know that stuff you think as a kid. Mm -hmm. so that's like that's so cool. Um, so uh, kind of getting back to Twelve Mighty Orphans, I kind of want to talk about like you know we can't say much of course because it's not out yet, but right. um, man, like for for me, I just had the time of my life you know with you guys you know not trying to get fearful or anything but uh no <laughs> but uh what was it like are you are you an athletic person at all or were you kind I of used to be yeah you know as you know I've, I've accumulated a couple of bad habits in my time and uh, I had to figure out a way to breathe <laughs> when I was um running it yeah. was definitely good maze runner and that have probably been the definitely the most physically demanding jobs yeah i've ever done yeah well, I, I put me on the back of a horse any day you know that's fun i'll do that but if you make me run 400 yards and not quit <laughs> i'm probably gonna throw up like that's just what's gonna happen <laughs> i'll do it Oof. uh when because when we got to set or, or not to set when we got to when we all were got to uh or did we did we get to fort worth or weatherford first i always get those mixed up fort worth we got to fort, fort worth. worth first yeah and we did that like little uh two-week camp or training camp training oh, camp boy boot camp boot camp man i'm gonna be honest with you like that is like a thing that's right up my alley i love doing stuff like that uh i'm a big sports guy uh i may not look like i am like athletic but like i'd like to think oh i just have fun doing that stuff I remember the first day we started, me and Levi, because we were kind of in the same boat, walked up with a cigarette in our hand. And, <laughs> and we looked out there and like all of you guys were just sprinting, catching balls and, you know, just running to have a good time. We looked at each other and we're like, oh, no, oh, no, no, no. It's going to be rough. And I remember funny, like we're both kind of built like we both kind of have a body build where we should be able to do that stuff but we just yeah. had it we just quit I look like I'm 16 but I'm 24 and I haven't exercised since I was 19 like <laughs> at all well dude, I mean dude, like if you're doing farming stuff like that stuff I mean you gotta oh, be yeah. strong but it works different muscles like you get a little yeah. doubter but you sure don't you, you don't get any uh cardio or, <laughs> or leg day you know like uh i mean i feel like you guys just fit right in when we get right into it though i mean we were all catching balls you know we were all dropping oh, balls too throwing stuff i oh, like that fun. yeah that's like doing just that camp was just a ton of fun and then we actually when we got, finally got into like the uniforms and stuff like that's when it was like do you ever have this uh i, I talked to uh slade and bailey about this when we did our episode do you ever have that like I haven't seen theirs yet i want you to send me the links to theirs I dude absolutely to... will yeah um we kind of talked about this like imposter syndrome that sometimes performers or artists get where especially actors where you book something and then you're just like hmm i wonder when they're gonna realize that like i'm a hack and yeah fire me do you ever like feel that when you're uh Dude, all the project? time man all the time before you get to one like i, I think it's just a, a regular instinct I, you know i'm pretty sure because i have it with anything i have it starting any new job or meeting new people like you yeah. always have that little nervous tick uh yeah for sure I, matter of fact i'm going i'm hoping to i'm leaving next week to start one and i've got the same thing i've been having the same thought i've been like okay well if they think I can, you know, if we, yeah. we've got this far, so hopefully, That's hopefully we can pull it off. But, but, you know, also like we get halfway through a job, like we were on that and you get so into that character. Like we all did, like we were all every day when we showed up making decisions on our own. Cause there were so many of us, you know, we were literally yeah. making the dynamic decisions among us. And that was that's cool so once you get to that point you know that you deserve like you know you're a bit there for a reason yeah you know? i once usually once we like film the first thing and like the director doesn't say anything to me i'm just like okay i'm not fired you can relax yeah. <laughs> just keep going <laughs> yeah okay. i do i would uh i don't think i've talked about this but uh i would get so so nervous the first feature film i ever did like i actually like before my scene uh, I was like in the bathroom, like 
trying not to throw up like mm -hmm. and what's weird was it was like man like I was kind of going through this thing like am I supposed like I want to do this and I love it am I supposed to be this nervous and what, this really, way, yeah. and what really relaxed me I read this a uh, great great book which if you're an actor listening to this go check it out it's called uh the art uh, the art of making film or the art of movie making by Michael Caine and he talked about how like when he first started like he would actually throw up on his shoes and like he would have to like go get them replaced and like he learned this like whole stretching technique and stuff um and so that really helped me but i i recently uh do you ever watch like those uh round tables they do with like actors and directors sometimes there's one sometimes. with michael kane where they asked him you michael you've been, you uh, around this table you've been like in this industry the longest do you still get nervous like probably not right and he goes well bloody hell i still get nervous <laughs> like, and i was like that's such a huge relief off my chest that like we're allowed to be nervous uh, someone told a, a, a writer told me this one time they said that art comes when you step out of your comfort zone yeah that where art happens it's in I that weird that. place it really is though and and I wanted to loop back to what we were talking about being embarrassed and stuff in school because that plays a big part to me with how I can do it. Those those little things to me give us the fact that we've lived through them and it's like, that's not going to kill you. A little embarrassment's not going to kill you, you know? Yeah. Because it's not like, I don't know about you, but a lot of times you still got a little something in your head whenever you're doing something completely abstract that you yourself would never do, yes. you know, on camera in front of people. And it's like, you have to make it look natural and free. And like, that's what you want. You know, there's still a little voice going yeah. Man, that's a little crazy. That's a little nuts, you know? Yeah. And like, but that, I feel like those little instances give you the, give you the capability to be able to do that and not worry about the aftermath or, or the, you know, taunting or whatever is going to come after. Cause it's like, well, I've lived it before. It can't be that bad. Yeah, yeah, really. I mean, in a, in a sense, in your head, I think that gives us a, a little pathway to be able to go through that and keep going. Absolutely. One of my uh, favorite actors that I look up to a lot is Viggo Mortensen. And, you know, he's had a long career, you know, Lord of the Rings, you know, um, and he's been nominated for Eastern Promises, Captain Fantastic. And one of uh, I watched this like little snippet interview of him and the guy was like, well, how do you decide uh, when you like when you read a script, how do you decide if you want the role or not? And he was like, Right now, I'm at the point in my life where if it makes my stomach turn and it makes me really nervous, then I know I have to do it because it's only going to make me a better actor by like just coming at it like head first, because then you can yeah. just like you were saying, get in a comfort zone and just stay there and just really never improve. And like one of the things that's really cool about acting, really any art is that like you if you're not open to learning most of the time you're going to fail so you always have to be like li like we're talking about at the beginning like listening to people like martin sheen when they're talking like not only when they're talking but looking at their actions and stuff um so I, yeah yeah i just i just love stuff i love watching interviews and stuff like that man but uh um, oh, me too <laughs> are there uh uh you mentioned covid earlier uh is there anything that like you kind of uh like any hobbies that you've picked up no <laughs> no not at all i've just been sitting but really like you know where i live i don't see enough people and i'm never around enough people that we of course we you know stay six feet apart but if i'm not going to a store or to town i haven't wore a mask like you know there's no point to really like i mean unless you just want to wear one for your own safety and not get pollen like, I, just, <laughs> I, don't see, I don't see anybody to get it yeah. Other than the people I work for and they haven't left this place in forever. I know they don't have it. So it's just, uh, it's been kind of normal in that sense. But whenever I get out and I have to go to, I'm kind of like Woodrow, you know, when I get out and go to civilization again, then it's always like, Oh yeah, this is going on. Like yeah. this is crazy. Well, um, a lot. So I want to say like after high school and then from then on out, like, my uh, video game playing time went drastically down. Like I remember like 12 Mighty Orphans. Uh, I was like, oh, I should bring my like PlayStation because I'll actually get to play on my days off and be able to play with the other guys. And then as soon as I got back from that, like it stopped, I stopped playing. And so COVID honestly kind of like reignited my love for like video games. Cause like it is an art form. Like it's so- it is, yeah. It's definitely a skill. It is, yeah. And of course, like 
people, you know, I, people always say, oh, video games, or some people say video games is a waste of time. Well, anything, if you do it too much, is a waste of time. You know what I mean? Right. So if you do it with, you know, some self-awareness, but like, I was just like, man, video games are so much fun. Like, it's something, have you ever wanted to do like a uh, motion capture, like for a video game or? thought about it. I don't know about motion capture so much as like, <clears throat> I would love to be in just like an animated, you know, I would love yeah. to just be a voiceover and animated, not really motion capture. I don't really want to have to do the movements and, you know, but yeah. to be in a studio and just like watching and trying to, that would be cool. I love doing voiceover work anyway. I, I just, I've always kind of enjoyed it, <laughs> but I think that would be cool. Dude. Yeah. Are, are there any, uh, uh, Jake, Jake and I also did an episode. We talked about video games, I think for like 20 minutes. Is there yeah. anything you're playing right now or? Um, well, actually Jake, like the, the new, uh, Call of Duty, I got, I got Cold War, but I play Modern Warfare or uh, Warzone uh -huh. enough that it's like my PlayStation's old and it didn't have enough storage. So I had to delete Cold War, which I haven't even gotten a chance to play. That way I can keep playing Warzone with all my friends and keep yeah. up there, you know, um, I guess technically I did kind of pick up on, on some video games since the pandemic. Uh, all of my friends, we got to doing it really big and, and some of them are still doing it. I've gotten off of it for the last like two weeks now and haven't even touched it. Yeah, but that's how I am with them, though. I'll start and play really hard for a week or so, and then I might not touch it again for a year, and I'll have to like blow the dust off of it. Next <laughs> time I want to do something and let it update three days. Yeah, are you a guy that watches like a lot of movies in his free time, or not? I, I love watching movies. Like if I can get myself to sit down and watch one, I just I love it. I get hooked in you know, most of the time. But it's getting me to sit down and watch one. Like can, as soon as we one. get off here, I'm leaving this house. Like I've got getting out of this house. I've been in here all day <laughs> doing like stuff here and getting ready to go to work. And it's like yeah. I gotta get outside. It's decent. It's like kind of warm. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, I don't uh, cause you're in Arkansas right now. I'm I'm in Huntsville. Like it's been beautiful this past week. Like yeah, it has. I, I missed. It. Oh, was Arkansas like a? Uh, I know Texas was like terrible snow wise. Like a it was pretty rough. Ago we got it's the first time in in like my parents and honestly my grandparents life i think that it's ever been negative temperatures i think we had like negative 11 wow. degrees yeah it was pretty crazy the lowest it got here was like 14 and everything like shut down is that pretty yeah. much what happened in arkansas oh yeah oh yeah it was shut down for like a week it, we didn't get it near as bad as texas we didn't get the, the amount of snow but Arkansas is kind of used to some of that yeah. not really the temperature but we're used to that much snow every now and then okay. it usually happens at least once a year maybe it'll skip you know once twice every other couple of years we're for sure going to get maybe eight inches I just like but, the image or the visualization that uh Texas is completely shut down roads are frozen over and Woody just like walks out in his overalls he's like well where is everybody <laughs> gets in frosty and takes off yeah 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 he's like is what a burger still open yeah <laughs> dude, by the way, like, do they have what burgers in arkansas or was that like we a don't no it's just a, it's a texas thing so we that was a new experience thing. for you too i've been, i've had them they have them in oklahoma as well and i've had some in oklahoma but i have had them before we had done that they're still not my favorite I really just, you know they're still not i i like in and out better and we don't have them either but if I'm if we're talking about the you know the the whole I would rather have In and Out than I had Waterburger. I don't. Wow, dude, I gotta forward this to like Slade and Preston. Oh, they're gonna. I tried telling all of them they're gonna hate me. I know they they don't like that. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were like serious. And then another thing that they were serious about was it was a gas station Bucky's or Chucky Bucky's. Bucky's, yeah. No, that is. I'm pretty sure that's a, no. That's just a Texas. They were that's like, great dude, you got to go to this gas station. It's called Bucky's. And I was just like, yeah. why would I want to go to a gas station? And they're awesome. <laughs> they were like, yeah, they're just like, they're like, you just got to go to experience it. I was like, man, like I shouldn't go like to any other Texas is great. Like things. They're like, nope. Just yeah. Bucky's. Bucky's. Um, it's, but the variety that that place has of everything is yeah. not. It's like stuff that you've never seen in your life before. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll give it to him. I, I'm honestly like, I, I I really did like Whataburger. Oh, we did eat it in and out once. Yeah, we did, and it wasn't as good. See, like L.A. In and Out to me is way better. 
is way better. Okay. Yeah, if you California In and Out is like that's where I had it for the first time, and every time I go, it's like a staple. I'm I'm going to have In and Out at least two meals out of the day for the first oh two days God. I'm there. I love it so much. Animal I get, style. Oh, <laughs> I've yet to be to L. I have yet to go to L. A. So we're gonna have to like. We need to go. We, we we need to all go together whenever we go. That would be a super fun trip for all of us to yeah, take. Yeah, we, we, we Slade's there right now. I'm pretty. Oh, is sure. it? No, he may be back in Texas. Uh, for I'm trying to think because online they're doing school online. I think. But Jake's there, right? Is Levi there? Or is he in? Levi's Vermont? there. Levi's uh, there. Well, I think he's there. He goes between there and New York, but he's he should be there. He was there yeah. last time. Yeah, yeah. If we all go there, I, I feel like someone else is there too. Maybe not. We all got to go and just like for one day and just eat in and out for every meal yeah we're gonna have to make it at least a week can't do everything <laughs> day. We, need to, we need to experience it we gotta really have fun go out and everyone's that's that's what's great to me about la is whenever you go like now that we know jake and levi and like a, a couple other people there like Luke yeah and, you know yeah. like everyone has their own place in la that they hang out so whenever you go see a new friend you always get to see a new part of la that you really haven't experienced yet uh -huh. and they're so different they're so different. It's it's so cool. Dude, it's been so many time. cultures, so many yeah. It's been it. on my bucket list to go to LA for a long time. I would love to experience LA with Levi because uh I mean he's just like a character. He's almost like a fictional being. You're like, is this yeah. man like real or not? And uh for like the I think I told Bailey and Slade this on our podcast. I was like, for the first week, him and I didn't really like talk at all of shooting. And I was just like, man, he just may not like me. And then like on set, we were uh, doing this part where we all have to like uh, tackle each other. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to get, I'm going to get this guy to like, he probably did like me, you know what I mean? But oh yeah. One of those yeah. things where you get in your head, you're like, man, this, he's just not talking. So I walked over to him. I was like, Levi, um, I like the way you did that. But when you do it again, after you get hit, I want you to get up and go, ooh, ouchie mommy, <laughs> which <laughs> would be a recurring thing that, you know, me, him, Manny, and I think some of the other guys would also say that. And then that's when I finally, like, broke him. He started laughing. I was like, all right. Yeah. Now I got all. I started putting up after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. But, um, uh, dude, I think it's already, like, almost been an hour. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Dude, not at all. I'm, um, I'm loving this. I just love talking. <laughs> Dude, me too it's just been so cool to catch up because it's it really has been a long time it really just flew by yeah like texting just doesn't do it it's totally different to catch up when you can not well face to face kind of you know yeah it's, I mean, it's close to face like to face the same thing yeah for real but <laughs> yeah we gotta plan that trip to la with woody if if woody can't come then we just have to cancel it and just wait for him to come because yeah, for no sure we're good we need to experience it with him or know? when he goes to alaska we we need to go up there with him catch it yeah that well, would be actually him on the way fun. back. You see, just have him stop off and take a week, and then he can go on home. He loves doing that, just stopping off. And stuff. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. yeah, the other night I was, uh, I'm working on this, uh, this pilot that I, I, I'm writing and I want to direct and shoot here in Huntsville. And I was talking, That's awesome. thank you. I was talking to Woody. I was like, Hey, I have this role for you. Uh, I can't, I, I can't think of anyone else for it but you, Woody. Yeah. And he, and he was like, Well, I guess I can do it. Well, let's see. Well, since now I know I can stop at Jacobs, it's only a six hour drive instead of a 12 hour drive. Cause he, and then six and six. I was like, yeah. I love that. Woody's just like, I'm just going to stop wherever I want. Yep. And he's welcome. He's welcome anytime. Always. He can't, he couldn't stop anywhere at any time of the morning and wake you up out of bed. And you wouldn't be like, come on in, Woody, let's talk. <laughs> like, just all the time. It's yeah, he's knocking at my door right now. I'd be like, sorry, Jake, I gotta go. I mean, what are you gonna yeah. have? But, uh, but honestly, all everyone was like, it's awesome that I've just had a, more of an opportunity, I guess, to hang out with Woody after the fact. But I would love to get with everyone and do that again. Like, dude. it's just we we all made such a bond on that show that it was it's it's something that none of us will ever forget. No, oh, absolutely, really don't, so ever. It's one of those memories, like we were talking about, you know. It it really it will just always stay in there, and uh, of of course. Like there were, there were some, uh, it wasn't all, you know, butterflies and rainbows. There were some bad days just like, oh, yeah. but the thing is like, we can now look bad at those bad days and be like, man, like that's hilarious in hindsight too. Um, cause <laughs> there, I don't like, you can't, we can't tell a lot of the stories cause the movie, it would spoil a lot of the parts in the movie and I don't want to do that. And yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. We know though. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, we know though. We know. <laughs> but um uh oh, where can people like follow you? I follow you on Instagram. Is it just Jacob at Jacob Laughlin? Dude, uh yeah, hold on. Let me let me get on here and make sure because I really don't keep up with it that much. I get uh, it's uh Jacob underscore I, Laughlin. Yeah, Jacob underscore Laughlin at Instagram. And there's a Twitter floating around out there somewhere, but I don't even have that anymore. That's that that got I, I just couldn't stand watching it anymore. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't stand it. I'm on Twitter, but I I don't have it like actually downloaded because I try not to look at it because you can just get frustrated scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. I'm just like, that's toxic. I can't do that. So that's exactly it. It was toxic. That's the word I was looking yeah, for. It was yeah. like, I don't want this in my life anymore. <laughs> it's just ruining the stuff I was doing on there was ruining my day. Yeah. The internet should not have a factor in your life that much. So I was just like, I just can't do it. No. But uh, all right, cool. So people can follow Jacob at Jacob underscore Laughlin. He's got the little blue verified check. Uh, like for real, man, it was a pleasure to have you on. Like, dude, it's been great. I hope it. I hope it turns out. I hope it wasn't just us. You know. Well, you know <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, I'm, I gonna, love I'm gonna edit the audio, and make it seem like you're saying things you didn't, because uh, I. I cool. Mean, I cool. Can. That's I can do whatever I want. It's my show. All right, that was the episode for today. Really appreciate you guys uh, just clicking on the video and continuing to watch and listen to my stuff, whether you're watching it visually on YouTube or listening to it on Spotify, Apple, whatever. I really appreciate you guys. Um, I got another great guest coming up uh, next week. His name's Ian Tucker. He stars in the film A Week Away. But um, go give uh, Jacob Laughlin some love on uh, Instagram and make sure to give this channel some love. So go like, subscribe, go check out my Patreon. Uh, and then also uh, maybe an easier way to support uh, this channel is to go to uh, my anchor. I'll also throw that link down there in the description. All right, appreciate you guys. Have a blessed week. Mm -hmm.